Hey guys, good morning. This is Jason at Mustang Rehab. Uh, back out here for part two of the Tom's Bronco Stage 5 two and a half inch lift. Uh, what I had to do, uh, well recap real quick. Yesterday we put on the front hoops uh, for the shock mounts and we uh, went ahead and converted our uh, engine mounts from the inline six to the V8. So if you haven't seen that, check that out part one. So today uh, we're going to put in the rear shock mounts. One reason I quit on it yesterday is uh, Johnny was tired and it was really hot and uh, so we just called it quits then. So I came in this morning and I went ahead and mounted the springs and the rear end housing. It's all rusty of course because uh, right now we're in fabrication mode. So I've got it mounted and we need to place our shock, our shock mount welds to the frame. But this way I can go ahead and put my forward shock on and then you have another uh, bracket that uh, welds to the bottom of your rear end housing. So you need to have everything assembled. That way you can place your shock mount. So anyways, uh, I'll get, uh, let me get the camera and I'll show you what we've got going on here. Okay guys, one thing is the springs aren't like your originals. Your original springs will have the front and rear eye bolt or your connection locations look the same. Well, Tom's Bronco has this uh, extra spring that wraps around the front. And uh, I believe that sort of works as somewhat of a traction bar. Anyways, uh, as you see, it's just bolted in. I didn't put the bushings that came for the rear shackle because I haven't cleaned it up yet. So right now, just they're in place, I'm getting my alignment correct, and then I've got it pulled in across the bottom like it's supposed to, so my pinion angles where it's supposed to be. So now, what we'll do is we'll get out these. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the front shock. I'm sorry, get it in place, and then we will pull out the other shock and get it in place. Using the measurement they give, they say it's basically 24 inches from this shock to the other, but again, there's no real clear place that you're measuring from, so I just feel it's better to do it this way. We'll get it fit and we'll see how close we are to that measurement. All right, these are the brackets that it comes with. The, uh, these two are identical, appear to be. So, I'm going to mount on the frame, something like that. And then you have these two brackets. I got both of them in my hand because I want to make sure I get the right one for the right spot. So, these are supposed to mimic the original, like on the forward side. And the instruction says that these actually will butt up against the other one, but Again, I just want to make sure before I just dive off into it. So here's what I came up with. I hung the bracket. I, I took where this where these instructions. They kind of read like they're a a newer Bronco because I think as the I don't know what year it was when they changed, but the the shocks are actually rear mounted. Well, with 66 at least, maybe more, they're forward mounted. And so they talk about measuring from the rear to the front, but then they have a picture that's opposite. So a little bit confusing, but what I've done is I kept the 24 inches they're talking about where your rubber meets the shock mount up front. If you have it in there, 24 in the center of my bolt, where this shock mounts up is 24. So sort of holding it by hand in place, the, the new mount for the axle housing lines up well and it's nice and square. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, like I did yesterday, I marked it so I can clean the frame up real good, so I can tack weld this in place, because I can't really lift up on it like I want to and place the, the axle housing support. So that's what we'll do and continue moving forward. Let's just kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. You see we're just a little bit forward of this rear cross member. It's 24 inches center line of the bolt to center line of the shock right in here. 
All right, let me do some cleaning real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing tacked on. I've got my my metal cleaned up so I can get a good weld. Let me check my measurement. That's all. I'm kind of rolling rolling this bracket to the arc of this of the frame here. So that way the bottom of it sort of stays with the frame and it kind of keeps it uh, consistent rather than just turning it straight horizontal then the bottom will actually the bottom of the bracket will hang off the bottom of the frame I think it would look a little odd This board's in the, in the way, so I don't want hot metal all over my new springs. Now I can pick up on my shot. All right, guys, I've got my my axle tube prepped so I can tack the bracket on. I'm not going to weld it out until I can pull the housing back out and, and pick it up where I can really pay attention and do a really nice weld on it. But uh, my focus today, anyway, is to frame, but if I, I want to get the bracket placed. And then once I got it all good and cleaned up, I'll finish welding it out. That's sort of what we're doing at the moment. Uh, let me get it tacked in place and then we'll check our fit. And then we'll transfer these to the other side and be done with this. And then we'll fix these. Uh, we have two body mounts that we need to fix real quick. And I believe we'll wrap up most of the fabrication that has to happen to the frame. Right, guys, I've got my two marks where this bracket's going to be. This bottom corner here butts up against the original. And I just line them up. And then this thing is radius where it just welds to the housing real nice. I'll tack it in place and we'll see how it looks with the shock on it. I don't want to put too much. If, if I got to take it, sorry. If I put too much, it's a pain to get it off. Right now I can just take a hammer and knock that off probably. Here's, here it is mounted up, uh, tacked in place. It looks good. Uh, they have the same lean, the uh, shocks. If you kind of look back over the frame, I'm sorry, let me see if I can get you a better vantage point. The, sh the shocks sort of lean in the same. So that looks good. It's 24 inches from mount to mount. And then that bracket is uh, lines up real good and it's centered on the other bracket and they look to be in the same plane when you look down on it I'm gonna call it good and I'll weld it out and then I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side so I'm not I'm not gonna bore you with showing that I'll come back uh, I'll get this welded out and we'll look at these two mounts real quick okay um, this is the front left driver side uh, body mount support so uh, I'm gonna basically where the chalk is I'm gonna take my torch we'll cut that out we'll make a template and we'll cut out another piece clean it up and we'll get that welded in and uh, we're gonna do the same thing to the passenger rear it's got the same type of hole so we we just uh, got our rear suspension in so let's get this done and we'll be ready to sandblast the frame You 
can see I, what I did is I cut out where it was thin. You know, of course I cut it with a torch, so it's a little rough, but that'll, that'll fill with the, the welder. So I got this cut out. I did the same thing at the back. It's more of a square at the back. I'm gonna use my cardboard again and make a template so I can cut out the new patch piece. Templates made, what we'll do is I'll cut the piece out and get the metal to fit like it's supposed to. We'll weld it in, grind it smooth, and then I'll mark my hole and I'll use a hole saw and I'll cut the center back out. But, um, but by the time we get that ground, it shouldn't be that noticeable. And then plus you're gonna have your body washers and mounts on top of it. But we can make this good and strong again. All right, here's the rear. I'm gonna cut my template out for it real quick. And get it transferred to the steel. Okay, and here's the uh, rear patch. So we'll go get it um, put on some steel. This plate I'm using is 3 16ths, which should be the same as the mounts on the frame and uh, be plenty strong. So we'll get these cut out with a torch and uh, clean them up and kind of grind them until they fit. I won't bore you guys with all that detail. I've got my piece cut out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it tacked in. I'll tack it in here in the back, and then I can take my hammer and flatten it out, and get it pushed in, and uh, I don't wanna have to grind any more than I have to. But uh, that's, that's how we'll start. We'll get it tacked, and once I have it all tacked and leveled out, I weld it out and grind it off. It's nice and flush, and that gap is actually good. That'll let the, uh, where I can just fill it in with weld, and that'll be a good repair, it'll be good and strong. Here's this patch for this side. We'll go ahead and get it, um, get it welded into, and then I'll drill them both out. So, we're about done here, folks. Here's the rear. I've got my hole saw. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the front one, then I'll come back here and we'll cut, uh, it's an inch and a half hole for the uh, body mount. Get that cut and we'll be finished. So let's, let's get this done. Okay, so here's the uh, repaired front mount. Just used a regular hole saw, drilled it out. And uh, there we go, good as new. That looks so much better than it did to start with. That's another thing off the list. Just gotta stick with it, guys. The, the list will get shorter. All right, guys, appreciate you hanging out with me today. Uh, we've got our mounts fixed now. We've got, I'm gonna take this a few minutes and weld out this shock support that we did a little bit earlier. Um, it's still just tacked. And the frame's ready to sandblast. We can sandblast, uh, try to Rust, put the rust mort and everything in it that we need to do and uh, keep moving forward. So uh, thanks again for watching, uh, subscribing, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.